Leafs talk, JD Bunkus, Sam McKee, the mm. Leafs. Oh, let's go all that. It's I'm like, looking a little angelic. What's going on here? I got a. That's there a. There we that's go. A, that's a smudge. No, that's we're better. There. We're better. Oh, you're better. Anyway, hey. that's, that's your fault. You don't frame before the shows. You stick your head down in the dust. You're reading your sad tweets about Vladimir Grow Jr. <laughs> <laughs> you're doom scrolling. Oh, you don't no. frame properly. And this oh, is how the no. show starts. Uh, leave five stars if you're listening on the old apple or spotify hit the thumbs up if you're watching on youtube some of you might be watching on youtube because you just watch vladdy does get out in another big spot and you're like you know what let me listen to these guys talk about uh that horrible leafs game i um, hate this less than yeah. i hate watching the blue jays <laughs> offense <laughs> yeah it's a like, pick your poison Leaf the only guy who game. gets any offense last night for the jays bench <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, good stuff uh okay so i'm gonna start with this was there anything you liked tonight other than matthew scoring a goal and ryan reeves landing a big knockout punch mm, good question good question i like that the leafs aren't gonna play tampa in the first round how's that mm -hmm. yeah i like that too man vasilevsky looked great tonight honestly uh, leaves actually played like a fine game yeah for most of this like they actually did get some chances and I thought, again, the penalty kill, that was going to be my answer. Looked solid. Mm -hmm. uh, just kept them to the outside. Not a lot of dangerous chances. Tampa ended up missing some because it looked like they were a little off their spots. But holy hell, the story, if you're looking at this from, hey, what's the story of this hockey game, mm -hmm. right? It's that the goaltender that is one of the greatest of all time looked completely dialed in against the team that likes to feast on him or did feast on him a year ago. Yeah, so... I, I often say that the biggest reason the Leafs got past the first round last year mm -hmm. in a series that they were pl outplayed a lot in was Vasilevsky. Vasilevsky in the first round last year was awful. And the year before, he wasn't great leading until they got to about five, six, seven, those games, the big ones, mm -hmm. and he locked it down, and he was unbelievable for that stretch. But today, like if you're watching, and he's been good for a long time here now. Their goals against, I think they're second in the league over the last 10 games. Like They've been really dialed it in. And... I think if you're an Eastern Conference team, mm -hmm. uh, this is the maybe the number one team you don't want to see. Mm -hmm. uh, look at the way the Panthers look recently. They've been scuffling. Look at the way, you know, the Bruins have been up and down this year. They're, they're, they're currently up, but they've had moments where you don't think they're world beaters. Like the Rangers are really good. Carolina's really good. But what team with Vassy playing mm -hmm. like this are you picking against the Lightning? Like it just really was a terrifying reminder of how good this guy can be. And, you know, it turns out when you have a major surgery because you're majorly injured, that affects your play. And I think tonight, if I had one, if I had one thing to the biggest story was that he was the best player for the Lightning. I think they had some good moments from the best other guys, obviously. By far, yeah. He just was really good in the first two periods. And they he held him in long enough, and the offense yep. took over for the Lightning. Dude, the save he made on Bertuzzi. Mm -hmm. When you kind of picked save. it. Yeah. yeah, like Bertuzzi's right in front of the net. It looks like he's about to get another one of his just, hey, I'm in a dirty area, bang this one home. Mm -hmm. And like nothing, completely shuts it down. Um, the, uh, here's what I, that one right there, like, whoo, great cross ice pass on the doorstep. Vasilevsky makes the read, gets across in time wow. and stones Bertuzzi. Like not, and, and that's not one where like Bertuzzi gets it up. Right? That's a goal. That's a goal. Yeah. Bertuzzi can't believe that that's not in the back of the net. Um, there's a couple things I love about Vasilevsky. It's just obviously the reaction time is ridiculous, but nobody is able to just smother pucks and kill pucks that mm -hmm. are dangerous saves like Vasilevsky, where you're like, how did you not even get a rebound off of that? Right. And he just, he completely takes it away. Anyway, 28 save performance for him tonight, really solid stuff. But Hey, Austin Matthews did get one and good for him. The nightmare for you continues that he might have to play <laughs> one whole extra hockey game. Yeah. The guy, the guy might end up playing the final game of the season against Tampa Bay, probably against Vasilevsky, since the guy notoriously hates giving up the net. But, buddy, he can smell it. He's taken some shots from oh, yeah. some areas. Yeah, he's going full over here, bud. And he that's, wants what, that's what you want. You want guys that play like Ovi. That's what you want to cheer yeah. for. That's your favorite player, Ovi. You <laughs> love guys shamelessly taking fallaway jumpers from the blue line. That's yeah. your, that's your, that's your type of hockey. That's fine. Hey, you can I want the that, guy. Man. I want a guy who wins a Stanley cup when everybody thought it was impossible. You know, that wasn't <laughs> yeah, that's, done. that's exactly well, that what aspect of Ovi. We need that yeah. in the city. It's, like that's exactly. definitely what we need, but that's still a few years away for that, for that Ovi. Mm -hmm. So it'd be tough. No, it's, it's great. Uh, great. It was a knuckler. It was a mm -hmm. bit of a diving puck. That, that's the only way you're going to beat him was with a puck that kind of changed directions. 
yeah, I thought I thought he was really good offensively again tonight. I thought he had a lot of chances. Vassy stoned him uh, with that rebound save where it looked like there was a ton of net to shoot at. He just gets so low mm-hmm. and gets across and shuts the door. So, yeah, I uh, I liked my Austin Matthews' game a lot tonight. I thought he deserved mm-hmm. a lot more. Yeah, his line was buzzing for yeah. a long periods of time. Absolutely. Like, so that's I, the thing about this game. It's a hard one for me to evaluate because yeah. I liked so much of what happened but it just really came down to two guys and yep. it was the one guy standing in the other end wearing 88 and the one guy wearing 60 wearing blue. And mm-hmm. that was really the difference in the game for me. I'm not going to say that all the ones that went in wall, like, Oh, you have to have those, but mm-hmm. you know, four enter the net again, the first shot of the game goes in again. It's just, there's a very clear lack of confidence with wall right now. And to me, that was kind of the difference. Um, it just, it hasn't been the same, right? No. Like it, ha- it hasn't been the same. There's a couple I get flashes. Yeah. There was the one game against Carolina and his first game back against Phoenix. He was pretty good. But other than that, yeah. it hasn't been great. Uh, I just want to say quickly too on Matthews, because I just, I looked this up. He, he's absolutely shooting the puck more. Like it's, he had the game the other night against Florida where he only had two shots, two goals, two shots. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, six shots, uh, hold on, six, five, 10, nine, seven. Uh, mm-hmm. In his other ones of his last five, well, he's that's what he's, that's a yeah that's what plays in the playoffs is shots yeah. from distance that always goes into the playoffs so that's what you want well, to keep doing hammer well, him just, from far away getting that rhythm Austin that's the I, what you I'm want just saying that he's shooting the puck a lot and I think it means a lot to him and it would mean a lot to the team <laughs> yeah. to at least again hit that <laughs> sure. sixty five number and yeah. I, I'm still sticking with it it's something that keeps him locked in if Matthew's going to play this way and his line mates are going to play this yeah. way like I'm all for it all the way down the stretch yeah it's this is a tough one for Wool right because. It's like the first one you go, okay, well, couldn't see it. It's a good shot. Goes in the net. Tough. Second mm-hmm. one was the one that was the play behind the net where it just goes right in front to point. It's like, awesome oh yeah. Pass by yeah. What, what, are you, yeah, what are you going to, what are you going to do? Right? Like, wait, like he's not expecting that to happen at all. It's bang, bang happens so quickly. Um, I thought he's got to make like the third one is a snapper from Stamkos off the rush. Like he beats him clean and it's mm-hmm. five hole and, Sure, it's a guy who scored 60 goals himself in the league that finds one. Like you just you gotta mix in, you gotta mix in a save yeah. in one of these, right? Just you just gotta find one and he doesn't find one. And so to me, it's like he didn't he wasn't horrible. He's not doing anything that's like setting off alarm bells for me. Um, I think he tweeted like feels like he's never makes the first stop of the game. Yeah. Like it's just like he puts him down one nothing every time. I think it's three but, games in a row where the first one's gone in. Really? I think so. Three or three of the last four or three in a row, like there's been it's happened. I, it, it happened in the game. What was the last one he played? He, cause I remember Keith saying well, he, he the played, first he one played three in a row, he just played three in a row. No, Samson off, Samson got, off yeah. played on, uh, the last game Samson yeah, off played against Florida. Yeah. That's he, what I'm saying. Yeah. Samson off got the Buffalo game and mm-hmm. the Florida game. But mm-hmm. before that it was wool three in a row. Yeah. So he's let in, I think he let in the first goal, three or four, uh, three or four games. Yeah. yeah. But he just, it's funny that that's happened though, because what have I always said to you is it feels like it takes them five minutes to settle into the game. Mm-hmm. It does. Like every. No, just that's it. It's like it, it. He always does look a little shaky to start hockey games. Then he settles in and seems to find his rhythm. He's gonna have to, I don't know, switch up his routine, figure something out, <laughs> because yeah, you can't keep spotting the other team a goal. Anyway, I just I think it's pretty clear that now Samsonov gets the net again on Saturday and he gets an opportunity to kind of lock this thing up. It's. It's still a battle to me. I think that both these guys are playing for the the first start, but yeah, Samsonov clearly has a lead, and I feel like the margin for error now for Wool might end up coming down to one more start. So if I'm watching these goals that happen tonight, and you text mm-hmm. me about sometimes his seeming, you know, a little bit of lack of battle in some spots when we were talking about it, just seems like he doesn't see it through or whatever. Mm-hmm. I it feels like to me that a guy, and I'm not like blaming the injury or whatever. But I'm no goalie analyst, so maybe you can leave this to the to the pros. But on the first goal, it doesn't seem like he's far enough out on the blue. And mm-hmm. on the goal that Nick Paul comes in, uh, gets on him, he's deep in his net. It feels like he's hesitant to come out and challenge because he's not sure if he's able to be able to get back. I don't, I don't know if he's not trusting the ankles right now. He's not back mm-hmm. in the rhythm. I don't know. It just feels like he's a little bit deep in his net at times. And even on the, even on the, the point one, which you're not going to blame him on, He's kind of frozen and he doesn't have a hard push. 
He did make a couple saves on hard pushes tonight, so there yeah, was a few the, of them. The biggest save he made was yeah. on a big hard push. But there's just a couple times during the game where I'm like, is he trusting that ankle? I, I just, I don't know. And it sucks because he was so great before that happens, but it just, it feels to me that he's just not trusting it. And that's my extreme amateur goalie analysis. That's what I see when I watch him play right now. Well, uh, like I texted this to you, but mm. there, there's like a, I don't know, maybe just a bit of a lack of confidence to his game right For now. For sure. For sure. Like he, he, he just doesn't, he doesn't look like the same guy. And I don't think that it's purely, uh, yeah, a, the other team is doing things better effect. I don't think that the Leafs, you know, were terrific in front of him at times. Like they put him in some tough spots on three of those goals specifically, but yeah, again, he's got to come up with save and that's what he was doing when he was playing red hot. Uh, moment of the game. Good night for fight fans. Like good night oh, for <laughs> people who love the scraps like you and I, people who believe in the, the meaningful scraps, the Rempe line brawl. Awesome. And then later on tonight, we get Ryan Reeves and Janelle in a heavyweight, just, you know, Manitoba versus Saskatchewan, just middle of the country guys oh, going man. at it toe to toe, two big heavyweights. Janelle challenges him and Reeves gives it to him. And oh, boy, he, did he ever yeah. give it to him because this, Overhand right that he lands sends Jano into the Conco call. Yeah. Like, oof. yeah, started bad it for him. Started bad. Yeah, I loved it though, man. I just thought that's this was a kind of a good night for Reeves. He just he he kind of gave you the full Reeves package. Yeah. So the thing, I mean, it's been two good nights in a row for him, obviously with the, the game against Florida, where I thought he was really good in that game because he's on the ice for a, go a goal at the end of the game. He's on the ice for the winning goal in this game where Keith is tr clearly trying to see if he can trust guys. And I'm like, you know, you know, you're still trying to solidify uh home ice or trying to, you know, you know, you maybe could have put your best players out there against their top line after mm -hmm. the, after the second whistle there, where you had an opportunity to change, probably could have done that. Keith, I get what you're doing. I understand that. But outside of that, like, I've loved him recently, and I thought if we – Jobo, do we have the clip of the first shift of the game that he had? Yeah. Where I just yeah. thought, like, he absolutely set the tone. Let and me I see thought, the punch first, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let yeah. Me see oh, punk. my Lord. <laughs> yeah, Ali, like, yeah. Ali, my wife's at the game tonight with a yeah. big big high flute and work situation, and yeah. uh, she took an incredible video of this fight from, like, the right. stands. And I might – I'm probably going to tweet it after the show, after everyone stops being so mad about the loss. It's an incredible video, and you can really see the knockout punch. And yeah, yeah, the other fight in the Rangers game, I know we're not doing Rangers talk, but the visual of four guys skating off the ice like with game misconducts that. after the first shift of the game, I'm like, hockey is back, baby. We are Dude, back. Two, Let's go. Two regional rivals like that, oh, too. Yeah. Like, yeah. People awesome. don't forget like yeah. the fight. It's just great. Yeah, that hit there. That was uh, – yeah. he stapled two guys on the same shift. And that one specifically, though, was like, that was thunder. Yeah. And you remember that year with the Golden Knights when Reeves kind of made a name for himself as a yep. playoff performer where it was like, I don't know, you could kind of see little shades of that from him recently, you know? Like, you can you could see it. The beginning of the year was a nightmare for him, obviously. And mm -hmm. uh, I buried him a hundred times, said the career mm -hmm. was over. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I, st I still think it's a debatable, like, it's, it's a discussion between him and Robertson, depending on what you need. Because I think Robertson still looks okay, mm -hmm. but... That stuff to me, playoff series, seven games, that matters. I, I want Ryan Reeves out there for game one of the postseason. Absolutely. And yeah. we uh, we had Adam Oates on our show on Monday, and he was mm -hmm. talking about the most – How physical. strong he is. That's He's, Victor Hedman. He just bodied him. He like, just bodied him. That's Victor Hedman shoulder to shoulder, and <laughs> Hedman falls down like Reeves hit me. Boom. Look at that hit there too. But he, But uh, Adam Oates was saying that the two hardest games in every playoff series are one and three. The first game where you're setting the tone at home and then you go on the road and you got to you gotta do that. So for me, I game one, if you're playing Florida and potentially game two, Ryan Reeves in the lineup. Depending on how those two go, you need extra scoring. You see how like the physicality plays out. You maybe switch it up later in the series. But like it's a no-brainer at this point with him being capable and showing that he can play plus hammering guys, sending Victor Hedman, who's, was he, 6'4", 6'5", you know, beautiful skater, one of the best skaters in the history of the game, sends him packing. You got to have him out there to start the series. So, yeah, I've, I've loved this last couple of weeks from Reeves, getting getting uh, into playoff shape at the right time. Dude, here's here's my major case for it. This is where, I, like, I kind of land on it. One is He's six the seven, Leafs are – by the way. Uh, what would you say? I said 6'5". 
Oh Headman. yeah, he was, uh, no, yeah, uh, he's yeah, he's yes, he's certainly six seven. Um, my case for it is pretty simple. It's I think that the Leafs need that physical play, that kind of nasty four checking guy mm -hmm. that can get in a scrum and bring some attitude more than secondary scoring this year. Like if, if this is Leafs teams of the past, I'm going, this is a no brainer the other way. You need to have Robertson because maybe he can score one. That's not supposed to be their issue this year, right? Like mm -hmm. if they're chasing a series, fine. My, my main thing is though, both guys are a liability defensively. Neither guy can get a puck out. Both guys, when yeah. they get stuck in the D zone, it's a bit of a nightmare. And so if Robertson, I thought had some kind of like material edge in that regard, I'd be like, oh, okay, you know what? Maybe Robertson, because I'm afraid of, the, the liability that is Ryan Reeves when it goes in transition or it goes into the D zone. But since both guys are the same, I'm saying give me the thing that you don't have as much of, and that's Ryan Reeves. That's the – yeah, that's what you saw tonight, that physical play. Also, I just got to say, quick aside, I think I've mm -hmm. told you this story before, but I'm not sure if I was the audience, but just when you mentioned the, the Headman 6-7 thing, mm -hmm. um, when I was in university in Ottawa and I saw him play for the junior team, saw him live for the first time, yeah. it's, it's among the most breathtaking yeah. things I've ever seen was watching him skate at that size as a young guy. Especially at that guy. level. That dude, level, he would have looked unbelievable. Dude, it was insane. Like, I kept I kept just, like, taught. Uh, first of all, I stuck in a Mickey at Captain Morgan, and I was drinking <laughs> in my seats. Oh, yeah. And so I was obviously getting in one, but all I was doing the entire game was, like, can you believe that guy? Can Talk you about look him. how beautiful he skates. <laughs> he skates like he's 5'10. I yeah. can't believe this dude as he was just murdering Team Latvia like 7 0. You know, it would be Jason Bukala to tell me he's good. That was it. Exactly. <laughs> I was like, I'm a scout, I think. <laughs> that guy, yeah. the 6'7 guy who yeah. skates like the wind, who skates beautiful. It was gorgeous. Like, yeah. I'm telling you, the first time I saw LeBron live in terms mm -hmm. of just the gate, the way that he moved up close, and I went, oh my God, I can't believe that you moved this way at that size. Obviously, Hedman isn't LeBron, but just the the way he moves at his size, the way he skates is just, yeah, it was glorious. I, One of my favorite, like, first viewings of a player that I can ever remember. Anyways, I know, I know we're not doing, I know we're not doing non Leafs talk here, but the most breathtaking person I've ever seen live in any sport ever, we saw this year. So, saw so Wembenyama. I've never seen anything like that ever. That was the best in person viewing of one singular athlete. Snatched of ever Scotty had. Barnes' soul. He was. Like, oh my god, that was unbelievable. He's gonna be the best player ever. Sorry, like dude. he's amazing. Dude, have you looked at his like stats? Since oh yeah, then? Like, I sneaky that. watched the Spurs because I'm like I yeah, have no. to watch the. No, he's he's full. He's full yeah. league pass worthy. Yeah. No, he might. It, he might shack it where it feels unfair for a while. Yeah, you know, like there might be like a five year period where people go, "Oh, sick league, real fair, yeah, this like is awesome. real fair." You're good. Yeah, this. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, this guy. Uh, anyway, anything else from you? Yeah, uh, I don't know. I forgot to text you to clip it, Jobo. But Nylander got smoked tonight. Yeah, he got nailed. Was it Mikey Isimont that got him? Oh, you do have it. Oh, Jobo, great job, buddy. He gets hammered here, and. Mm -hmm. I don't know the, I mean, it's not that hard to hit, but gets knocked off his feet, gets caught. Like, mm -hmm. I don't remember the last time this happened to Nylander. And I really felt like it knocked Fine. him off his game. I, I honestly feel like he was shook up from it. Like just didn't, it just doesn't happen to him. Him and Marner rarely ever get hit. And it just felt like it kind of, it went to him. And I don't think he was very good for the rest of the night. I honestly well, thought it in the him. open ice. Yeah. Like, boom. Good hit by Isimont. I love that there's no response to it. It's in the flow of the game. Like, that's a fine, clean good, yeah. clean hockey hit. No problem, no response or whatever. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I was surprised by that, and it felt like it really affected Nylander. Yeah, I don't think his line had very much push. No. No. <sighs> uh, I never thought about the hit uh, and the correlation of it. I will say that that's a great point by you, though, that for a guy that like likes the dangles as much as he does yeah. and – uh, plays in those high danger areas for hits like that. I mean, different league, different time, different era. But mm -hmm. yeah, I now that you say it, I can't think of a time that I've ever seen Nylander get buried open ice. No. no. Uh, and you mentioned Tavares there, that line. Yeah. I think I think uh, the captain, you know, we talk about how he's getting older and when he's better with rest. I think it mm -hmm. might be time to next week, how many games are there? Four games next week. I think maybe, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to, I don't know how I many have. How many have left? Seven games now or no, six but they, games? Yeah, right? and they, they, yeah, and they still have two back-to-backs. Yeah. So like they've I got think a back-to-back -back Monday, a Tuesday. Off. Yeah. Yeah. Back-to-back -back Monday, Tuesday, and then back-to-back -to, -back to close the season. But again, that that final game of the season, mm -hmm. like, I don't even know how they're going to dress a team. Like, everyone's going to want that game off. For That's sure. going to look like preseason, just shinny. But you can't do that in hockey. You can't do that yeah. in hockey. 
What do you mean? The like you preseason can't, style? Yeah, you can't like dress no one. People still no, have no, to play I, the game. No, I know. I'm just saying that I think they're going to end up scratching a few guys yeah. for sure. They're going to end up, and I would guess that those guys that get scratched are going to end up being Tavares as one of them. Like if I had to do like a Vegas board of most likely to not play the final game of the season, a back-to-back, mm -hmm. Tavares would be the heavy favorite. He'd be like minus 580, like yeah. out of the regulars. You know what I mean? Like obviously Giordano, others like that. Actually, Gio's mm -hmm. probably playing that game yeah, because it'll likely be his last game. But um, yeah, I don't think Tavares will play that one. And I think that there's a good chance that he misses uh, – he misses the second half of the back to back, which I think is just like a game against the Devils. Next week is a slog, but it's yeah, but it's actually, true. actually, Pens uh -huh. coming in on Monday night. Yep. Uh they are sneaky, so alive in the playoffs. And yeah. uh the I don't know what they did tonight. I'm not sure if they played tonight, but they're like right in it. And they come into town, least have a chance to drive the stake into the heart of Kyle Dubas's penguins, Sid Red Hot, who I can't cheer against. It's actually a sneaky, sexy game on Monday night. The only problem is it's across from the Jays home opener, which I know mm -hmm. devastates you. Uh, I couldn't care less. I'm not a home opener guy. You know that. Uh, it's amateur mm -hmm. night, but uh, it's mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be a good one for the Leafs on on, uh, on Monday. I have a special place for it because it's it's when the ballpark used to be full. And now since 2015, like it's been full ever since. But before then, it was like I would really soak it in going, imagine there would be winning baseball here and yeah. people would come. And so now it's, now it's a team ruined by the <laughs> anyways, let's, no, uh, uh, let's move on. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Same for my show tomorrow yeah, when I talk job. about Vladdy's AB to start and get really mad. Uh, yeah. On my show tomorrow, uh, Christopher Stieg on what's up with the power play and how much to be concerned. Cause that is nice. kind of his thing. And then uh sit six arrow on some blue Jay stuff and st the F Stephon Diggs trade from a bills fan standpoint. Uh, going to be a fun one tomorrow. Subscribe and review to the okay. JD Bungus podcast. You got guests that you want to plug? Uh, trying to get Panger on, who is between the benches of Rangers and Are you Trying tonight. to get Panger, you can get yeah. he's available. All right. Well, no, like, but he's he's, like, he's a busy guy. So I got to text him. I know, him, but he's, the best guy. he's coming on yeah. for you guys. Like we'll see. Yeah, if he's not traveling, you'll do it. But I got to text he'll him tonight. So yeah, yeah. Uh, after the game's over. So I'll get him to Panger right. text, yeah. but that's what we're trying. Possibly the biggest sweetheart ever. Uh number one nicest guy in media, <laughs> yeah, probably. Exactly. Dude. Holy jumping, Panger. Dude. Adore the guy. I know. <laughs> Plays <laughs> so much golf. Like we would, yeah. if we would, if we were in the same city. We'd be best friends. Oh, All he oh, does yeah, is like, also like Jordan's course. He's yeah. like a stud. Anyways. Yeah. Anybody that plays golf, Sam will be your friend. Uh, <laughs> Correct. <laughs> subscribe and review. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at GD Bunk. Is that Sammy McKee? We will see you. Uh, what day is it today? Wednesday. It will see you Saturday. There's no game till Saturday. Borny and you. Oh yeah, me and Born. Born and I. Born and I. Saturday night against the Habs. See you then.